everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Elisa, aka Tokyo Girl. Today we're going to be doing some Q&A. I had collected all the questions that you guys asked on Instagram, so I figured it'd be a good session to reintroduce myself as I got a lot of questions about myself and I got a lot of questions about Japan. Let's tackle it all together. Also, excuse this lighting, I'm at my parents' house. There's lighting everywhere, and this is the best position I can find. We're gonna be back. If you hear some background noise, it's because my family's having lunch. <laughs> okay. Question number one. Why can you speak English so well? Ah, uh, did it. So question number one. Why can you speak English so well? A little bit of a backstory here. I was born and raised in Japan. I'm fully Japanese. My family was also born and raised here, but I was very, very lucky and fortunate enough to have been able to go to international school from a really young age. And fun fact, I have an older brother, but he doesn't speak any English because he went through the traditional Japanese public school system. So I'm the only one that speaks English out of my family, which made things a little bit hard growing up as a kid because I couldn't lean on my family to get help on my homework, etc. And the only people that I could get help from were my friends or teachers at school. And I was a really shy kid. So I struggled a little bit, but definitely it made me more independent. And also I had to take the train and bus to school. I started taking the train and bus from the age of eight, I think. It was an hour commute. That was a journey in itself, but also another factor that made me very independent from a really young age. Question number two, how old are you? <laughs> this is a question I also get all the time. Um, first of all, guess, what do you think my age is? Because I get a lot of like early 20s. Sometimes I get 17. I'm super flattered, but I'm actually 30. <laughs> I just turned 30 last year. I'm turning 31 this year. My birthday is in September, so I'm a Virgo. But yeah, baby face. I feel like my face hasn't changed since I was in like fourth grade, which is sad. But also, hey, now that I'm in my 30s and I still look young, I'll take it. <laughs> Loving your vibes. So when and why did you move to the US? Thank you, first of all. I got a lot of nice comments, by the way. So you guys are all the best. Um, I moved to the U.S. for college. Sorry, my, my brother's slurping in the back. I actually went to Waseda University after graduating from high school here for a year. It wasn't the best fit for me, but I still wanted to try it out because it's a very good school in Japan. But I transferred to L.A. after that first year of university here. Um, and that's when I moved to L.A. I went to University of Southern California, studied business there. And after I graduated, I started working right away. So I started working in marketing and just kind of stayed there for 12 years, just building my career, etc. So I never actually lived in LA or US before that. Are you permanently living in Tokyo? Yes, I'm currently living in Tokyo after 12 years of being away. I'm finally back at home. The next question is, which apartment did you finally rent? So I get this question a lot too, and I didn't show it on TikTok just because of privacy and, you know, security reasons. But I found one that was in the Shibuya kind of region. And I'm really happy because I can live with my dog, Chloe. How's the transition been moving back from LA back to Tokyo? So it's been really smooth, I would say. I think the biggest thing just coming back to Tokyo from LA for the first few weeks was definitely around jet lag. But now I'm fully adjusted to the Tokyo time zone. But I think one thing that I forgot about Tokyo and just living in Japan is how much you walk. So for the first couple of weeks or for the month even, my legs hurt so much. And I definitely just wore sneakers all the time just because you really can't wear like anything fancy. Definitely no like heels. I don't wear heels ever, but I would never wear heels in Tokyo unless I'm taking the car or something, which is not that often. Uh, biggest adjustment, this is kind of similar. The biggest adjustment moving from LA to Tokyo, I think definitely outside of the time zone. I think the people are so different. I think that you don't really talk to strangers. I feel like in LA, if you go to the grocery store or if you see someone on the street, it's so normal to just strike up a conversation. That rarely happens here. 
I mean, people are still friendly. Like you would say hi to your neighbors, et cetera. But outside of that, you don't really have like, you know, communication with strangers. It's very um, kind of an isolated society. You just stick in your own zone or lane. So you don't really like interfere with other people, but it's not to say that it can't be that way. You definitely can. Hey, next question. What do you do in Japan? More stories about my job and workplace there. It's a great question. Um, my full-time job is in marketing. I've been in digital marketing my entire career. That's what I went into right after I graduated from um, college or university in LA. And I've been doing, you know, a lot about around paid media, growth marketing, etc. So I'm still doing that job on a consulting basis in Tokyo. So I have clients in the US, which I'm really thankful for. But so that's my full time job. And then I started social media on the side during the pandemic, um, just sharing random content about Japan and it, that really kicked off. So I'm doing this as a hobby. And also just because I know that there's a lot of people that are interested in Japan. And so my goal with my social channels was to just showcase an everyday life in Japan, just showing you kind of the ordinary things. So I don't really go to too much of the very touristy spots <clears throat> or like very like hypey spots. I just basically show what I do on a day-to-day -day basis. How do you do it? Work, make content, socialize, hang with family, have a business. What's the secret? This is a really good question. And honestly, sometimes I die because I feel like I'm doing too much at once, but ultimately I uh, go with the flow and see how I'm feeling for the day. And I feel like social content making is a full-time job in itself. And definitely there were times when I burnt myself out. But at the end of the day, I think I realized over time that it's not worth the stress. So just taking things step by step, making a to-do list definitely helps and making like priorities for the week, priorities for the day. Um, but not overworking yourself because... It's just not worth it. So I think priority list is important and having days, having off days is so important. So usually on the weekend, I spend time with my family. And during my, the weekend, I barely, you know, do any work or make um, edit or anything like business related just because I want to be fully invested in spending quality time with my family. But it does get hard and I feel like there's no easy shortcut or easy answer to that. So... We just all try our best. Would you come back and visit LA? A hundred percent, I miss LA. I'll definitely be back sometime within the year, but I haven't made any plans yet so far. What are your favorite beauty and makeup products? Also love your angel tattoo. Thank you. This one, um, I got it done by Jose. I'll link his Insta and social there. I love that this was my parting gift to myself from LA. So I like it too. But for my makeup and beauty products, I my go-to is Cam Make or Cezanne. They're super affordable. All the items each are less than $5 or around $5. And they have a lot of great color cosmetics like eyeshadow, blush, highlight, lip. So I think those are my go-to and you can buy them at any drugstore. So they're just very accessible and affordable. Outside of that, for skincare, I use a lot of Japanese products just because I feel like they work better on my skin. But I use a lot of like Shiseido sub brands. The one that I've been loving right now is called Deep Program for skincare, which you can also get at the drugstore. So I'm just using their whole toner, moisturizer, their whole line. And it's been doing really great. My next question is similar. Best drugstore in Tokyo for skincare, cosmetics, for tourists? So there are a few drugstore chains. Honestly, they're all pretty much the same. So wherever you are, you can just go to any drugstore. It's kind of like CVS, Walmart in the US where they're pretty similar. So I don't really have a favorite, but I will say that if you want a one-stop shop, Don Quixote is a really good variety store where they have makeup, skincare, food, souvenirs there's a huge one in Shibuya. So I feel like that's a good one-stop shop for all things like Japanese product related. I'm in Tokyo for two days. Where do I go? What do I see? 
for, in terms of the areas, I would recommend going to Shibuya, Tokyo Station, around the Imperial Palace, Shinjuku, Akihabara for all the electronics and anime, cultural stuff. And I feel like if you want to do some vintage shopping, I would recommend Shimokita Zawa or even like Shibuya Harajuku area. So it really depends on what your objectives are and what you want to do, whether that's eating food or shopping. But ultimately, I think those areas would definitely take up two days to explore. So let me know in the comments if you want anything specific. What is something unique for people to see in Tokyo that you recommend visiting? That's a really good question, a really hard one to answer. I would recommend just visiting the more underrated cities outside of like, you know, places like Shibuya or Harajuku or Shinjuku. I like the more chilled, relaxed areas with less people. So I would push people to go to areas like Jugaoka, which is a little bit more low key. You can find a lot of cute knickknacks. But then again, there's unique things all over Tokyo, depending on what you want to see specifically, like very unique food, unique areas to shop, etc. So that's a really hard question to answer, but I hope I answered it. Okay. Is traveling in Japan expensive? This question I also get a lot because I feel like a lot of people have a perception of Japan being very expensive and this is a yes and no. So taxis are pretty expensive. I wouldn't recommend riding um, or taking the cab unless you have to. Metros and trains are definitely more affordable. Each train ride, depending on the distance or line, ranges from a dollar to anywhere from five dollars if you're going longer distance but bullet trains tend to be a little bit more expensive as well they start around a hundred dollars depending on the trip it could be up to like you know three hundred dollars so it depends on your budget but you can definitely find affordable options because for longer distance there are buses that are around you know 30 bucks that you can go further distance of course it's going to take more time but it's possible. So I feel like there's a budget for everyone in Japan. Here's another good question. An area to stay in Japan that's close to everything like malls, shops, and restaurants. I always recommend people who are coming to Tokyo for the first time to stay around the Shibuya area just because I feel like it's most central. If you want to go south, it's easy. If you want to go east or west, that's also very easy. I feel like a lot of people tend to stay near Tokyo Station, um, which is not my favorite. But then again, I feel like the public transportation in Japan is so good. It doesn't really matter as long as you're in the city. But I would recommend just staying around Shibuya if possible, just because you can walk everywhere. And I feel like it's a really good location in terms of taking the public transportation to other areas if you need. Also, some people sometimes like to stay in Shinjuku, which is close to Shibuya. But if I had to pick, I would probably recommend Shibuya area. What is my least favorite thing about living in Japan? So my least favorite thing about living in Japan, that's a really good question. Honestly, I don't have much to complain. Also, I'm biased <laughs> just because I grew up here. So I don't really have anything negative too negative to say about coming here otherwise i wouldn't decide to come back and live here permanently but oh i think one of my least favorite things that if i had to pick one it would be how conservative the culture is i feel like at the end of the day people will for example like i can't i don't really dress in crop tops in japan or like skirts that often just because I feel like people look at you weird um, especially in crop tops and I also have um, tattoos so I feel kind of self-conscious about that I don't really care right now but I feel like sometimes people do judge me for my looks and that's one thing that I absolutely hate and I feel like is unnecessary so I think if I had to pick it would be that but it's not like anyone would come up to you and say something uh, or at least I've never had that experience myself, but I think it's just, yeah, a very still conservative country. Okay, now we're going to the food section. What's an underrated Japanese meal? I would say an underrated meal would be udon, 
I feel like there's a lot of interest in ramen or sushi, which they're amazing and they are my favorite as well. But udon is like the thicker rice noodle, uh, more chewy and textury, but I feel like those are so good because you can eat them hot or cold. There's different types of udon as well. They're my favorite and I feel like they don't get the spotlight that it deserves. <laughs> okay, favorite cheap eats in Tokyo. So there's a lot of great cheap eats. I mean, starting with a convenience store or the konbini, you can get, you know, like a dollar onigiri, a dollar rice balls. You can get less than $5 obentos. So convenience stores are a great place to get really cheap and quick snack, etc. But as far as other ones, I have some favorites like Otoya, which is a chain Japanese restaurant, which serves Japanese meals like fish sets, even some like chirashi bowls or fried chicken bowls or meals. There's a lot of different Japanese um, lunch sets and dinner sets that you can order for less than $10. And they're a chain, so you can find them everywhere. Another favorite one of mine is for spaghetti. There's this place called Goemon, another chain. There's a million things on the menu and it's honestly really good pasta. So that one's a really good one. You can also eat around $10. And my last one that I'm going to name is Koko Curry or Koko Ichi in Japanese. It's a fast food curry shop, but they're also so good. And you can just customize your curry and you can eat around $10 too. So that's always a quick eat. Oh, but also name things like Yoshinoya, Matsuya, and Skia. They're all the, pretty much the same beef bowls. Those are really, really cheap. They're around like three to four dollars bowl, rice bowls with meat, and they're so good. Okay, what's my favorite cafe? So I visit a lot of different cafes. That's one of my the things that I love to do when I explore Tokyo and different neighborhoods. I love to go to different cafes and drink their coffee or matcha. But my recent one, I will say, I would say, Onibasu coffee is really good for um, lattes. Their food is a little bit expensive, so I wouldn't recommend getting the food there unless you want to try it out. I mean, they're delicious food, but a little bit pricey, but their coffee is amazing. And also I would recommend Cafe Log House in Daigayama. That's a really nice setting. They have really good pastries and bread. And I feel like that's been my recent favorite for a cafe. Next. Favorite matcha dessert or pastries you've had in Japan? So I'll name one from the convenience store and one from Kyoto. I feel like Kyoto is the place to get the highest quality matcha. And there's this place called Matcha House that we've been to in Kyoto where they have this matcha tiramisu. It was so good. I definitely would recommend getting that. And also getting the matcha latte from Arabica was also really, really good. So those two things in Kyoto. But otherwise, you can also find some really good matcha um, pastries within Tokyo, even at the convenience store, which is crazy. At 7-Eleven, they have these uh, matcha tarts that's like super rich and dense, and it's so good. It's around like a dollar, a dollar fifty, and it's in the cold section. That's been my favorite. Coming close to the end, best ramen in Tokyo. Also a hard question. There's a million ramen shops. They're all so good but my recent favorite has been Takano which is in Ebara Nakanobu I think there is a line because it's a popular location amongst locals but it's so good they have this spicy dipping ramen noodle that I love and obsess and crave once in a while so it's definitely worth the wait and I'll link it in my description below if you guys want to check it out but that place is so good and I think it was rated by Michelin once so I think that's another factor why uh, it's become so popular. It's in this underrated city and a lot of like ojisan go. It's so good. I crave it all the time. Okay, any advice for someone wanting to move to and work in Tokyo? If you haven't visited Japan, I would try to book a trip just to kind of get a feel for how the city is, how the country is. I feel like going cold turkey might be a culture shock. So I would definitely recommend visiting if you can once. But otherwise, I feel like for foreigners who don't speak Japanese, a lot of, you know, like 
tutor jobs or English teaching jobs are available. There's a high demand for that because there's a need for Japanese people to speak better English. So I feel like there's a lot of programs that、um, support you know, foreigners who want to work in Japan. So I feel like that's always the easiest route. But another route that you could go to if you're not looking for a job per se, but want to live in Japan, is going to a language school in Japan. So, there's a lot of language schools that support learning Japanese, and that's, I feel like, the best and easiest way to get a Japanese long term visa. But I know that that costs money, and going to a language school is not cheap. So, it's easy, but it just depends on you know, your budget and also what you want to do in Japan. I also heard from my friends that there's a lot of foreign agencies that hire English speakers in Japan. For marketing, but also for you know, more of the creative side, like filming and editing. Also, I'm the type of person that if you have the passion and drive for something, you can absolutely do anything. So, if your goal is to be in Japan and you know, learn about anime, or if your goal in Japan is to you know, make film and shoot commercials, you definitely can find a way to achieve that. As long as you put your mind in. Head to it, anything is possible. So, if you want to move to Japan, you definitely can. But I will say, you know, there's, it's not going to be easy. I feel like Japan at the end of the day, it's definitely beneficial to speak Japanese. I feel like in Japan, it is not as easy as other countries. If you don't speak the language, it's definitely harder and there's a bigger hurdle for you to find a job opportunity. But having said that, It's not impossible. And if you are you know, wanting to move to Japan, I can also try to research a little bit more just because I don't know too much about the hiring landscape here in Japan for foreigners just yet. So I can definitely do a little bit more research. So definitely let me know if you guys want to learn more. Anyways, that concludes this QA. I love getting all the questions from you guys. So thank you guys all for submitting. Also, I love reading all the comments too that you guys left. But, anyways, I hope this helped to some extent. Thank you guys always for watching my channel and watching this episode. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel, like and comment for any questions, feedback, etc. And I will see you guys next time. Bye!